All right, all righty. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the next Style For It live stream. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the style amb ambassador for the company and the beautiful woman next to me, virtually speaking, Faith Costa. She is a model, an artist, an activist for body positivity and mental health awareness. Yes, she does all of that. <laughs> And she is a proud a member of the Southwark community, ambassador and influencer and all of that good stuff. And so what brings us here together, what is Style For It? Style For It is the first plus size online consignment platform dedicated to sizes 12 to 32, which is super, super cool. Ladies, you can shop, you can sell your own clothes, make money off money, make money off clothes you already have in your closet and just connect with a body positive plus community. It's just all that and so much more. And today we, we do many of these talks if you haven't already seen. And today's topic is really interesting interesting. You and I were just talking about something relevant to this, and it's, it's really the idea of how to keep moving forward. I think you and I both have different experiences, right, with, with our lives and our careers as to, you know, how we've had to keep moving forward to, to succeed, to get past challenges. So I guess first out of the gate, uh, I thought it would be probably most effective to talk about the mental health component of me moving forward. So what are your thoughts on that, Faith? So for me, I'm like very open about my mental health and my, you know, diagnoses. I have severe anxiety and depression. I'm very open about it. Um, I talk about it online because, you know, I've lived with it my whole life and there's been times when it's been really bad. There's times when it gets better, but either way, you know, the yeah. fact that I push through, get through it and still am able to live a quite decent life, you know, I think in those hard times, you yeah. think, you don't think of what will happen next, right? You don't think that, oh, I can have a life, I can have a job that I love, I can have friends and, mm -hmm. you know, to, yeah. you know, have the mindset to push through to know that it will get better is major. And um, mm -hmm. for me, having like, the foundations that I have, um, and support systems and therapies yes. and that and uh you know having passions in life as well makes it get through a little bit easier yeah awesome okay so when it comes to so what are some techniques that you have used and and maybe it's you know maybe it's services like you mentioned therapy or you know mentors or things like that but what would be like key mental health resources or techniques that you use uh, and and for things that you're overcoming and if you want to you know share examples be as open and candid as you'd like <laughs> yeah so Again, for me, 100%, like, therapy is number one. I am so pro-therapy. I've okay. been in therapy uh, since I was in seventh grade, and I'm 20, I'm going to be 26 now, so, <laughs> and it honestly, yeah. with that for me personally, and then having, like, medication, it's, like, 50-50, it's a teamwork effort, you know, um, has, again, like, our foundation okay. is amazing, um, as far as like resources, having a good support system in your life. I was just telling you, I was so glad that I have my parents to kind of help me and know me and, yeah. and know um, the extent of my, my mental health, my mental health issues because yep. they know when maybe before I even tell them if it's, if I'm going through a hard time or something. And at this point, especially, you know, we've developed coping skills yeah. to help get through it and to kind of, you know, mm. take it head on. Um, so yeah. for me, yeah, I've developed a lot of coping skills. I have, you know, things that I personally do when I'm really down or, or, you know, when it's an inconvenient time, you know, I've even been in situations where, yeah. um, Oh my gosh. So super candid. So I'm a model, everybody, right? I was at a photo shoot maybe yeah. a few weeks ago. And for some reason, I was having a really, really bad day. And uh, I ended up crying out of nowhere on set. <laughs> like, it was oh, like, wow. out yeah. of nowhere. And thankfully, though, mm -hmm. my team there, who I work with regularly, like, know me. And, you know, I've, I've 
talked casually about it and you know related to some of the people there and they were like okay yeah. what can we do like let's take a break i was able to like go mm -hmm. collect myself like they completely understood which okay. was incredible right like in a situation that was really yeah. embarrassing and really stressful and then probably escalated like it's one thing to already feel down and then yeah. to kind of lose it and in a work setting because like that's a that's a place yeah. that that should not happen probably but I was very very lucky to have that group of people there mm. support and to have my mm. to be able to go to the bathroom take the few deep breaths you know do some grounding exercises gotcha. to like get myself together mm -hmm. and then I powered through the rest of the day and I was it was great good, good. <laughs> you know that's so awesome. For, wow. awesome so for you know everyone it's different and I think what's really mm -hmm. important is finding out what works for you so whether that's therapy whether that's mm -hmm. you know, skills whether that's you know none of those at all or all of them like it's really yeah. really yeah yeah and you can get through situations Absolutely. you can get through a day you can get through a week you can get through a month and you can get through the rest of your life absolutely exactly i love that you you pieced it out that way because i think you know thinking about your life on the large scale can be very overwhelming and uh, and too much for people but if you think about it on a day to day on a week to week on a month to month before you know it you're passing through years and you're living your life right but you just have to partition it into pieces that work for you and so for me i guess i would say for my mental health so i grew up in a very like so i've shared this on social media my parents are from jamaica uh, Caribbean culture is a little rough and tough, right? Like, I don't think my parents even, like, think therapy is, like, a thing. Like, they're like, no. And I'm like, you guys are so not... <laughs> You're not getting it. People have mental stuff. They have to work it out. We all have mental stuff. You have to work it out with professionals, but they just, they don't get it. So, you know, I, I, I would say that for my appreciation of therapy was something that I learned from other people who have been through it and, you know, I, and kind of advocate for it like you do. And so I, uh, I would say in my growing up, I, it wasn't something that I felt comfortable with because I was under that guise, but what I've done for my mental health and to get over and get through things, I've really tried to focus on words and like mental strength and fortitude, right? So the things you say matter, right? Because if you, if anyone has read Law of Attraction or The Secret, you know, the premise of like attracts like, but also thoughts become things, right? And so if you really think about that, then what does it mean? You have to change how you speak because you're literally manifesting things in your life. So language that I try to focus on is like, I can fill in the blank. I will overcome. I am strong enough. I am capable. Like affirmative statements to myself, things that I write down, things that I say has helped me with challenges. And I would say for me, most of my challenges have come from being a person of color, being plus size, uh, <laughs> being different, right? Just not, not being the same as other people. So, you know, and, and, and people will try to steal your power and, and you have to fight back. And, and I try to stay away from like, I can't, or I don't know how, or, you know, the questioning, can I really do this? Or I don't know where to start. All of those things are, uh, you know, I don't think they've really helped. And also I would say mental health wise, uh, it's really easy to get focused on the problem, but I try to be a solution solver. I've always like, as a kid, I see a problem and I'm like, hmm, there's a solution. If there's a problem, there has to be a solution. Like, it just, it has to be. <laughs> so really focusing on that has really helped. And then I guess also just being determined. I think, you know, it's really easy to just be like, ugh, like I can't, right? But it's like, but what if you could, right? What if you could take a deep breath? What if you could take a moment for yourself? And so those are the things I do. But yes, I'm glad that you're one of the many people advocating for therapy. I wish more people in my community would be more accepting of it because I, I think there there could be massive transformation for people, but people are like, no, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's cultural. I don't, I don't know if it's well, a fear, you know? Honestly, even like my dad actually did not mm -hmm. get it at first. It took him 
Okay. Years of actually seeing me kind of struggle and understanding, like he actually didn't even under couldn't process depression. Like he's like, you know, he kind of was mm. up in a different generation. It was like, you know, like you're fine, like get over it, like you know what I mean, like rub some dirt in it, like yeah, you're just fine. Like, keep moving. And he yeah. really tried, you know, you know my mom and you know me, to kind of really. Yeah really like explain like no mm. i'm not just sad i'm mm. you know this is a chemical imbalance in your yeah. brain like this isn't just you know me being lazy or me being mopey or me being a, a teenage hormone yeah. thing you know um but after only a few years he actually did get it he he gets it now but mm. it was difficult gotcha. you know, he was one a man <laughs> Which I think, if you grow up as a man, I think <laughs> well, no, I think you're taught different things, you know, especially like back yeah. back then, you know, um, when it was very, you know, like masculine driven of, you know, again, like rub some dirt in it, like you're yeah. fine, you're tough, unemotionless, like don't be sad, like you're yeah. tough and happy, like there's nothing else other than that, or, or you're weak, you know, so yeah, it, yeah. I think can be definitely a cultural thing. I think it can definitely be a generational mm -hmm. thing. I think um, mm. it is our duty to kind of like educate each other and to lead by example. And that's why I'm yeah. so open about it because I feel like even like when I was growing up through it, it was like such a faux pas to be like, oh, I'm going to therapy today. Like if friends wanted to make plans mm. for me, mm. I'd be like, oh, I have a meeting. They're like, what meeting? And I'm like, because I didn't even want to say, oh, I'm going to therapy. And then if I did, people were like, oh, oh. it was like, you know, it's mm. happening out. So now I am wow. so open about it. I'm like, I can't today. Like, I'm going to therapy. I'll be free after, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> because you know, it's, it's a part of my life though, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, and it's, you know, help, yeah. you know, help me survive and, and to live my life fully and, and, yeah. and, you know, with more help, you know what I mean? And people, all people need help, right? In one mm. way. And for that, some that's therapy, for some, Absolutely. That's medication, for some it's both, for some it's neither. But I think to talk mm. about that it is an option is major, <laughs> you know, because some people might come from Absolutely. a family like yours where they were told maybe one thing, but they would actually benefit from it yeah. a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, I Absolutely. think that we're all kind of taught maybe different information and we have to kind of do our own research to find out what is best for us. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm, yeah. Absolutely. And so, uh, is there like a, is there a health campaign, like hashtag, like just out of therapy or like therapy rocks? Like, is there any, do you know of any campaigns about like there that? Or no? is, there probably is. I don't know about a specific mm -hmm. campaign, but if not, I'll start it <laughs> just out of therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Holler at me yeah. after therapy. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. And when, and just out of curiosity for people who might want to do that, what would you say is the best way to try to find a therapist for you? Like, where do you go for that? So I was, you know, kind of fortunately very lucky that um, my parents, because it happened very young for me. So my parents did kind of yeah. have access to finding a doctor for me. And the thing was, I shopped around, <laughs> you know, it is, you oh, know, okay. to like ask okay. what you trust and like, you know, um, I went through, I remember actually like the first couple, um, I would go for a meeting, you know, you talk to them mm -hmm. and I pick up and be like, I did not like her. And like, I would leave and be like, I don't want to open up to them. It's mm -hmm. not the right thing. You know, if I'm going to, you know, go okay. in with this and like truly yeah. feel comfortable, like, I'm not going to waste my time or their yeah. time. So to really, like, I think that is important in finding a therapist is to know that, like, if you find one, you're not stuck with them, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because it's, it's mm -hmm. for you. Okay. It's a hundred percent for you. And if you're not comfortable, that's major. And you can mm -hmm. find someone else that will. And I think that that also, like, I've even had friends who like 
maybe were turned off by it because the first person they would go to see then made them uncomfortable. They kind of, you know, rubbed them the wrong way. Then they didn't want to seek further help. Then they like completely stopped. Oh, but okay. with the internet, you use the internet people, you can find doctors, you can find programs like, yeah. you know, apps like BetterHelp and things like that to, um, to find a good fit for you. Um, you know, mm -hmm. after your insurance company is in the area, you know, like what will work for you. Um, if you're mm -hmm. in school, if you're in, you know, high school, college, grad school, take advantage of those counselors, honestly, um, for free. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after the fact, they'll help you set up with someone, uh, to seek afterwards. Right. There are so many different avenues. Gotcha. Okay. I have a friend who has been in therapy, ask them maybe to give, to get a recommendation, you know, um, asking mm -hmm. again, if asking for help in the simplest way can go a, a huge way. Absolutely. Okay. So from that, I'm getting a couple of things and we have some comments. Tanya Turner says mental health should be a main focus in high school. People need to be taught self-care early in life. Completely agree, Tanya. You're a hundred percent right. You know, as much as algebra counts for some people, it doesn't count for all, but you know what does count? Self-love and self-care. That's something every human being needs. Otherwise, we have problems in life. And sometimes these problems become so huge and manifest into self-harm and situations where people lose their lives. So absolutely. Keith Burroughs Sr. says, Faith! So... <laughs> <laughs> so just want to make sure you guys thanks for tuning in make sure you're sharing this yes she said Keith, get it <laughs> uh, uh I, and i and also what i like is that you said you know you really have to be resourceful right when it comes to your mental health you have to fight for yourself and i like that you also said that you know you don't you're not stuck with someone, right? Like if this is a journey, you really need to find a good fit, right? And it's not like you'll try to make it work because that's not right. I don't think that mental health works that way. So I think finding someone that that you feel comfortable with, that you can express yourself, because again, it, it wouldn't make any sense to go in a room and, and not share your true story and not be authentic because how are you helping yourself if you're not able to really tell your story and work through these things you have to work through. So if you're struggling with mental health stuff, that's definitely things that you need to keep in mind and, and keep going, right? Even if you've spoken to four people, if they're not, if they don't work with you, maybe the fifth one will, maybe the sixth one, tenth one, keep going. You have to be determined to love yourself and care for yourself. Yeah, honestly, I... I went through a couple, um, I would, you know, and it was always just like the mm. first meeting, you know, so I went for, you know, kind of like shopping interviews for therapists and, you know, then I finally found one that I <laughs> fell in love with and I stayed with her for mm. like seven years and then she retired and then I had to shop around again and, you know, until I found okay. that right fit and now my therapist now, oh my God, I love him so much. He's so amazing. He is just like the coolest Aww, like great yeah and he's so smart and like i you know so like it's really mm. it really makes a difference like when i i look forward to go to talk to him because i know that he gets yeah. it in life and he gets me and you know yeah those times when i went to like the people the people that i didn't that didn't work you know i would have never been able to then even get better mm. or progress them because it was not good Absolutely. and again I was very lucky that I started my therapy journey early considerably you know when, again like when yeah. I was in seventh grade I was very lucky and I, I went every week until I was 22 and now I go like every other week um but still then to yeah. keep that consistency and it is a hard you know I feel like um I I don't want to miss out on saying that that it is really difficult and especially when you're depressed, to have mm. that willpower to to do it for yourself can be really, really hard. But it's important, and it's your life, and you can do it, you can get through it. You will find help, mm -hmm. and you will get better. But it mm -hmm. will, you know, be it'll take some time. Unfortunately, you won't, we all want instant gratification. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a process and you have to like go in knowing that for sure. Mm. 
Absolutely. And I think people should also remember, right? Like, however old you are, it took you that many years for you to come to the decision that you needed therapy and needed help, right? So how could how could the problems be resolved any shorter <laughs> than, you know, probably a couple of years, right? Because it took you a long time to get here. So it's going to take some time to, to kind of remove uh, some of the issues and work through them and have res resolution. And I mean, I, just out of curiosity, is there is there, when it comes to therapy, is there an end game or is it really kind of a lifelong journey that you just, you spend, like, what are your thoughts on that? So honestly, I feel like it's, it depends on the person. Um, I think for some people, mm -hmm. they definitely, it's like, you know, or if someone has like a trauma that happened and they need to like work through that it, with mm -hmm. grieving. And the best thing is therapy can be used in so many different ways. There's family counseling, there's couples therapy, there's, you know, the, you know, trauma relief, like there's so many different types. So it depends on what you're going for, right? Specifically gotcha. for me, mm -hmm. I have kind of accepted that, I will probably be in therapy for the long haul, which I already have. Um, you know, it's been mm -hmm. the majority of my life. Um, but I know that it's vital for me to live um, and to thrive. Mm -hmm. It's like drinking water. It is, you know, a part of my routine, right? Um, to Absolutely. take care of myself, you know? Um mm -hmm other people I think you know and it, it does work that way for a lot of people where they go for a couple years and then they genuinely get better and don't need it anymore and don't want it and like that's okay and that's great that is then it worked <laughs> and you're, if you're happy yeah. and you've gotten through yeah. that and you're functional and you've learned everything you felt like you could learn um and then to know that if you ever need it you can go back you know I think it is definitely situation. Mm by the person but for me I definitely um think that I will have a therapist the majority of my life um yeah but even, you know my like a goal is to maybe go once a month or every other month you know what I mean it's a check-in you go to the doctor gotcha. to get to get a physical right every year or you should or apparently yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you go to the dentist to get <laughs> training, <laughs> you know <laughs> You go to the dentist, you go to your other doctors to check yeah. in, right? Even if it's once a year, you should check your brain, too. That's a huge organ <laughs> in your body. Check your brain. That you need to make sure is, you know, working well and squeaky clean, right? Yeah. So even, you know, yeah. you just check on yourself even after the fact the, to follow up, you know, because... You go to the doctor again, like, you could be fine, but, you know, they make sure, they take your blood pressure, they they do this, they do that. You should, you should, I feel like people should do the same yeah. for their mental health, you know? Make sure that, you know, yeah. everything's working all right. <laughs> yeah. Your mental I health... I think the, is the biggest issue, like, I'll... I'll... As physical health, yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest issue, and we talked about this actually on uh, on my podcast, Woken Free, is that uh, there's a stigma still, right? So from a from a professional perspective, right, as a lawyer, if I were to go to a therapist and the therapist were to diagnose me with, you know, a mental health disorder, right, that that's not something that I can just keep between me and my therapist. But I, I forget if the therapist is required to report it or if I, I think I might be required to report it to then the bar association association who then would probably have to like determine I mean I'm not a practicing attorney so it doesn't affect right. me right so if I have a mental breakdown I just have a mental breakdown <laughs> but uh, but for for attorneys who like that's their livelihood even if they are in crisis they just they don't feel comfortable like endangering their career right and and that and they're not alone because I think if that applies to lawyers it probably works its way down to doctors and other professionals. And, and so I think people are scared of having something on the books and then it dictating how their life needs to change. But again, that's a logical, right? Because if you are having a mental health crisis, then your life 
has to change no matter like it's inevitable right like so uh it's it's but it's interesting i think a lot of people fear labels and stigmas right like and and because of people like you who are out here telling the world listen yes i have this but guess what i also do this this right it's not hindering you it's a part of your identity but it's not all of who you are i think if more people can change the narrative to do that then i think people will like let down this guard in this fear wall of like, oh, but what if I'm, but what if you are? And 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 so you you take your medicine, you you, you do what you do and you live your life. Like keep right. it moving, right? Like we gotta keep moving forward. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Absolutely. the end of your life or the end of the world if you struggle with anxiety mm -hmm. or, or depression or, you know, bipolar disorder or, you know, dissociative, dis you know, like any yeah. anything, it really, Again, it's a small part of you. It's not who you are. Um, you know, I have brown hair. I'm Italian. I like cats and I have depression and anxiety. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, <laughs> cool. All right, whatever. <laughs> On to the next thing, you know, it's, it's, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a part of you, but it can be for the better, you know, like I've really yeah. through it all. Feel, I'm so glad that I know myself better than anybody. Like I really had to get down and dirty and, mm -hmm. and really work on myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who I am without my, you know, mental illnesses. I wouldn't have gone through the things that I've gone through. I wouldn't have met certain people. I wouldn't have gone certain places, you know? And um, mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed of that. You yeah. do need to get that stigma. Um, I'm not, again, like in the workplace, I could only imagine you know how difficult that is, you know, um, and yeah. it is like our job again to now to break that stigma and to kind of be open about it. Yeah. And you now if we can show people like, yeah, I have clinical depression, and anxiety, but look at all these things I'm doing. I can travel and work and, and still, you know, find joy in things and have relationships and things mm -hmm. like that while also having my you know mental illness it'll show other people that you know they yes. can live as well <laughs> and that's really important absolutely absolutely hey ray race ray star says hi uh yeah i mean it's and it's also interesting because i i don't know if you've ever like applied for jobs but there's a lot of job applications that will require that you identify right like i mean they don't require it like it's optional but they do ask if you want to answer the question of like what's your racial designation do you have a disability and include and inclusive in that list are mental health challenges right and and so wow. it's it's interesting i think that's also why people fear like because yeah they'll be like you have to list if you have a mental health stuff and i'm just like i i mean i get it but like <laughs> if no one else is, is, that, is that gonna make people is, if you want it to be private it's sh you should have that you should have that option and you know if yeah. your life at like a part like that i i kind of that's kind of crazy to me because if it's not going to affect your mm -hmm. job then it, it really doesn't have to yeah. be anyone else business <laughs> i mean unless you yeah. want it to be i don't i think that's kind of that's kind of wild i didn't even realize that um that yeah crazy yeah. oh my god it is no, and it creates anxiety like for people. <laughs> <laughs> you're like boo no <laughs> no yeah it's no one else's business like, yeah absolutely no so business, but it's because it's mm. your choice if you want to share that, you know, like you should yeah. not be required to just close that unless if it is going to dramatically affect that job for, for whatever reason, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I get, it. yes, I get it, but no, F that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's a it's a convoluted issue. We probably should talk on even more on mental health, really, to be honest, because it affects like you're saying, right? Like if you're depressed, it's hard to get out of bed. You know, what are how is that affecting your career? And so definitely right. a lot more to talk about that. I guess the only thing I would add to it is if people are interested, I would say for me, for my mental health sanity, and, and so you talked a little bit about uh, kind of what you do for me, I would say like music, reading, I've talked about affirmations, journaling, exercise 
exercise for me helps me get out of a funk. You see me constantly posting because I'm I'm trying to hold myself accountable because if I don't have a picture up, it's like, uh oh, Tasha, you haven't been to the gym. So that that's how I, I ha that's how I hold myself accountable uh, with my crazy boomerangs. <laughs> but, you know, and, and then also my pet. How much I love seeing those because it inspires me. You know. Yeah. That daily, thank you. I, I appreciate. That. Awesome. And you talked about creating a system of support with like your family and friends. Do you have any advice for people? Like if you are struggling with uh, a career obstacle or mental health issue, how do you find your tribe of support? Do you like support groups? Do you like meetup groups? Like what, what have you, what has worked for you? So I, I remember, like, again, like, when I was in high school, I tried to, like, look up, like, the meetup groups and things like that. I personally, unfortunately, in my area, there weren't a lot of options. Um, there, gotcha. and my therapy is, you know, like, one-on-one, -on -one, but there are group therapies where you can find people who, you know, are going through similar things that you are. Um, and again, if you're in school, mm. you your counselor and they will help connect you to other people if you don't have that family support again i'm very lucky um mm -hmm. i forget that a lot um and i don't take that for granted at all mm -hmm. that my family has been super supportive even <laughs> my sister is now <laughs> a therapist she literally became a therapist oh wow <laughs> cool very that's so wow. cool yeah, she works with women um, at a hospital. You know, she's a LCSW. Mm. So um, she, uh, you know, to even have my sister that I know that I can go to, she kind of, we do have a rule, yeah. though, to, like, separate. I don't know. She kind of doesn't love to take her ho work home with her. But I know that if I ever need to talk to her about yeah. that, like, she is there. She's a resource, um, right? Yeah. I, and all my friends, they pretty much know my situation <laughs> and my life you know i have a couple friends who i've known mm -hmm. actually since before i even started going to therapy right so they are very much so mm -hmm. aware um and even you know to have that to know that like if i have to cancel plans they understand that but it, it is hard and it takes some time mm -hmm. you know there was a point where i felt like i didn't necessarily um feel connected with people because of it i felt like i was losing friendships or things and and it, it takes a while to find your tribe and mm -hmm. to find people, but know that there are people. And that's the thing. And, like, online has been, like, incredible, right, to see, like, the mental health community online and to connect with people with similar things as you. Yeah. Take advantage of that. Again, if you're watching this video right now and you're going through those things, here are two yeah. people, literally, that you're watching right now that are going through that, right? Yeah. Um you can Absolutely. have access to all these things, you know, follow platforms like um, the National Alliance on Mental Health. Um, uh, what was the other one? The Mighty, uh, you know, like, again, Google is your friend. The Mighty, yeah. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. always like mm -hmm. the main thing. Google is your friend. Um, no matter how old you are, yeah. you know, whether you're, you're male, female, uh, both, neither, doesn't mm -hmm. matter, race, age, anything you deserve access to getting the help that you need that you want and to having that support mm -hmm. system so reach out to you know people who love you whether it's your mom your your sibling you know a cousin an aunt whoever you're close with who would understand yeah. that and if you think that they might not try honestly if you never had that conversation yeah. maybe sit down with them and explain it to them and you could be very surprised yeah absolutely I love that so it's interesting for me I would say because of how I was telling you the cultural uh, kind of overture of how I was raised I wouldn't necessarily think to talk to my family about a about a, a mental health crisis a career crisis because there's a lot of judgment there's a lot of lack of understanding and there's a lot of criticism so for me i would say my tribe of supports extremely narrow so it would be myself <laughs> It would be my faith, right? It would be Khalil, my husband. Uh, and I mean, yes, I could talk to my dad. But again, I feel like 
with parents it's some it, can, it works both ways right it could be like super loving and coddly that's not how my daddy works he's more like why did you allow that to happen Urgh. like it's just like militant like and you're just like okay that <laughs> so uh but i have found i know it's, it's a little frustrating but what i have found and i am grateful for is i have extreme and you know this extreme fortitude <laughs> because when yeah. you don't have a lot of others <laughs> to rely on you have to dig deep in self right and yourself like you me myself and i we have to be our best friends <laughs> like it's just you gotta you i have to i have to motiv my, motivate myself i have to get myself out of a funk i have to believe in myself more than anyone else you know not whether or not i have people who support me or not and so you know i i i don't know i think i and i just want to raise that to people because not everyone like has your amazing parents and family oh, exactly. and, and so that like we have different examples of like oh pick yourself up and in different ways but you still got to get the job done yeah no exactly that's what i was saying was that i'm very very lucky and i don't take that you know uh for granted because i know yeah. that a lot of people do not have that situation and you know that's the thing is that you yeah. definitely have to have it in yourself to get through it and even if it feels like you don't you do you do and that's the thing is with the depression okay. things like that with like mental illness it feels helpless it feels hopeless you feel weak but you're not you know you are absolutely not and even if you can find one person one friend yeah. to confide in you know what i mean that's all you need you need yourself and even if it's just one person though one support other support if you just go to therapy or have some kind of outlet that's major you know um no definitely uh, and whoever your family is, whether it's your, you know, God-given family or your chosen family, you know, we all have different mm -hmm. situations and like, that's okay. You know, again, I'm mm -hmm. very fortunate that I have my parents. Um, but I know that yeah. it seems like more and more people do not, um, have that same yeah. family yeah. that I do. And I am very aware of that. So like for you, like, you know, again, like you're so lucky, like you are lucky. You have your husband that you've been with for 103 years and, you know, <laughs> totally. <Yeah! laughs> and, you know what I mean? Like you will, no matter what, like you will find your people, you'll find a person and, um, yeah. you know, yeah. hope is not lost. You're not alone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, you are never alone. And, and yes, people need to understand that whether it's just you, one other person, a million people, we are all hurting in some way or form. We are all saddened and troubled and traumatized. And, and there is unity and there is strength in that. And I think we, you have to, you just, again, the way that you have to hunt out to get the support and resources the people, if you need more people in your life and people to support you, they're out there. It's just, you got to make an effort to try to connect. And so I'd like to go on a little bit on to, we have like two more things to talk about. One is acknowledging emotions. So when it comes to emotions, like what are your thoughts from, you know, like if you're dealing with say challenges as a model or challenges as an artist, how do your emotions hurt or help you in that endeavor, in those endeavors? So anyone who knows me knows I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> I have a lot. Feelings about feelings. Yes. I'm very <laughs> emotional. <laughs> you know, when I'm happy, I'm very happy. When I'm sad, I'm very sad. You know, all in between. Mm. Um, my art, it's generally a very good thing because art is pure emotion, right? Art is cathartic and it's you yes. express yourself so with that it can be very helpful um but at the same time i have to be able to have that energy like i have to be in that in between place where you know even if i'm like really depressed like when i'm depressed i might not have the will to do to make art i might not have that energy um but there are the times when it is very inspiring when it, i do want to dig deep and like let it all out which is really great because, you know, again, like my art, I talked about coping skills, has become one of my coping skills. Even though it is like my passion in life, mm. it is also, you know, cathartic and therapeutic for me um, to do in times of need, right? 
um, as a, you know, <laughs> has a, you know, lifeline. Um, when it comes to other things, yep. yeah, maybe not the best. Um, with specifically modeling, I feel like you do kind of have to go in with one emotion and that's just confidence. Um, you can't really be having a bad day. You can't, you know, be sad. You have to be able to put your face on and, yeah. and, and stay tall and, and, you know, have the energy. And so again, like, however, yeah. like I said, you know, uh, shit happens. <laughs> and like, I had a bad day and, you know, um, <laughs> I couldn't control, I couldn't, I couldn't put on that face that day. I couldn't put on that mask. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it was, but again, I was also very, 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 very lucky that I was surrounded by people who mm. were accepting. If that happened in a different setting mm. with a different team of people, mm -hmm. that would be terrifying. Um, I don't know how it could have gone, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and with that, you do have to kind of be careful, but at the same time, like, you have to, you know, know yourself, you know, don't, if you know that that's going to be a problem for you with work, then kind of maybe know that, that that's not an option and, and find a different route. There's always another way. There always is. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. for me, I, in the fashion industry, I'm more of a face, right? um and a voice mm -hmm. but if you want to be in the fashion industry but that might not work you can be behind the scenes you can be writers you can do be an editor you can do other there's always 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 another option and you have to find that for yourself Absolutely. right so while mm -hmm. it's while yeah. you, know, you can thrive with it know that mm -hmm. yeah sometimes <laughs> that's the whole thing is that it gets in the way sometimes it's not ideal in professional yeah. settings but you can get through it and it's not an end all, you know, I'm a living example of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I can get through it, absolutely. And, you know, have, you know um, an embarrassing moment, but know that I, for some reason, like, and like, that's okay. Like it, it was okay to have that bad day. Mm -hmm. but then they still hired me absolutely. again, <laughs> you know, uh, they were a reg they're yeah. a regular client of mine. And, you know, it was one out of 50 times. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So it... Yeah, human, um, human beings were fallible. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, like, and, like, being able to identify your feelings and your emotions, I think, is also really, really important. Um, I think a lot of people mm -hmm. have really hard time with that, to putting, like, the actual, like, names to the, the things that they're feeling, Right. So I kind of yeah. have, through therapy, become really good at when someone, when it, you know, if my mom asks me, how are you feeling? I'm feeling this, 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 and this. Okay. <laughs> and so that's why I put names to it can help you get through it, right? Um, whatever it may be, yeah. even, if, even if they're good emotions, you know, um, being able to identify mm. that and know yourself is really powerful. And I think practicing I that, that, practicing that and understanding the different emotions and, you know, how to kind of, you know, um, work around them or use them, even it goes both ways, mm -hmm. is really a major life skill. Mm, absolutely. Okay. So for me, I would say my journey with emotions and like a challenge, I guess my biggest challenge I'm facing right now is a health challenge, right? Uh, I've talked to you about this as well. My hypothyroidism, right? It's a condition where my thyroid is ineffective. And so I need medication every day to kind of stimulate and put in uh, all the, my hormones, TSH hormones that I'm not producing enough of naturally, right? And and so it's uh, <laughs> it's it's been challenging because because with hypothyroidism, you have a lot of fatigue, you have, it's harder to lose weight, uh, you know, your thyroid has like 12 different ways that it affects your body from your sexual drive to, you know, getting, dealing with uh, depression, just randomly just becoming depressed, and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot, your thyroid's like 
hella important. Like, I, like no one, no one tells you about that. Super important, guys. Super important. <laughs> so, like, check on your thyroid. Check on your thyroid. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, for me, the biggest challenge is, you know, productivity, right? So, I still have to produce. I still have to work, even if I don't feel up for it, right? Even if I feel like my body is betraying me, which sometimes I do, I feel like my body is betraying me. And that's a rough situation to be in because, you know, this is, you have one body. So you're like, come on, girl, come on. And she's like, nah, chill. Like, I'm good. And you're like, no, <laughs> get it together. <laughs> so I have learned, these are kind of statements I would say that I've, I'm trying to kind of wrap my right mind around. And, you know, yes, your emotions are real. I love that you said you should be able to put words to your feelings. You have to be able to be in tune with you enough to understand how you're feeling and how to articulate that to people who can help you if you need help or just are checking in on you. But your feelings aren't everything. Meaning what? <laughs> just because we don't feel up for something doesn't mean we still don't have jobs to do. It still doesn't mean if you're not a caretaker, you still got to feed your kids, still got to feed your pets. If you have a job to go to, you still got to make money. You still got to pay your mortgage, right? Like there's still shit that has to be done. So understanding, yes, these are my feelings, but I've got to find coping method methods <laughs> to get past and keep moving forward. Another thing is uh, that I have recognized, and this is what I've done when it comes to people, is our feelings are triggered by things, right? Our, our feelings are triggered by what we say, what we think, what we do, who we're around. So it's really, really key for me, I have found at least, to be very conscientious about how I spend my time and what I'm saying and what I'm doing and who I'm with. Because there are people, for instance, in my life where if I'm already feeling like 50% lower <laughs> energy, I can't, I don't have energy to deal with a toxic person. I don't have energy to, who's going to be with someone who's going to be super judgmental or super negative, right? It's just going to lower where you're at. And then at a certain point, you're, you give up, right? So really I have found like identifying triggers is really key, right? Like, nope, this makes me feel like shit. Not listening to that song. Nope, you're crazy. Not walking to you. Nope, right? Like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta just like close the door to things. So you're just like, mm -mm, nope, not today, Satan. Not today. Not today. And <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> so oh. I have found that to, yeah, you know, just like putting up healthy boundaries. And then also, I, and I know this is hard and I, I'd love for your thoughts on this, which is, because sometimes you don't have a choice, but like they say, right, that happiness and joy is a choice as, as, as is sadness and, and, and despair, right? So what would be your advice because on that? Because you can't even biologically control, right, when, when you're depressed, <laughs> right? You might want to be happy, but you're... <laughs> your brain is no. like, no, nah, I'm like to Definitely. the left right now. Like, that's a tough thing because, like, I don't believe that. <laughs> like, ah. like, if I no, that's could good. That's really good. To, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's something like I want more than anything to be happy and not, you know, when I struggle with my depression and my anxiety, like, I don't want that. Like, that's not mm. something I, I, you know, love. Like, I just want to be happy and have joy and if I yeah. if it were that easy it would be but it's not you know mm. um it's you know when people say oh just be happy like no like I keep like if I could I would then this wouldn't be a problem <laughs> like I never really got mm. that um absolutely um, okay again, like again I, and for me you know I think that some people um it's you know, who go through different things and it isn't like, you know, everyone's depression is different. So yeah, I think that some people kind of can snap out of it um, a lot easier and like, that's amazing. And I wish I could do that. But for me, I know that is not the case. It is a chemical imbalance in my brain. I can't just be mm. happy <laughs> when, <laughs> you know, I'm not. Um, I can, again, yeah. I use my skills, use those, those foundations, go to therapy, you know, have my support system to help me get through it. But, um, again, yeah. if it were that easy to just be happy, I feel like then no one would be depressed, like no one would suffer. And I don't, so I don't get that because millions of people do. So <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> so for some people though, I think it is like even literally I actually yeah. talked to someone and she, you know, had, you know, gone through like some anxiety, had gone through a period of depression and that was like more selective. It mm -hmm. clearly wasn't necessarily like a lifelong issue. And, you know, with like yeah. the process that she went through, she really was then able to kind of decide, okay, I'm going to be happy and like get through this. And she did and completely like got through it that way. And that's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. That is so great. And again, mm -hmm. for some people, that's how it works. And that's great for others like me, not the case, um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to figure it out for yourself. You know, if tr you have to try because then you won't know, right? So I definitely have tried that, you yeah. know, back in the day. If I, you know, woke up in the morning and said, today I'm going to be happy, I tried, I did, I tried a lot of different mm. things, and I definitely had tried that, and for me, it did not work that way. It didn't and work. And that's okay, mm -hmm. because other things do Absolutely. work to help, you know, ease it and to help get through it, for sure. So you have to figure out what's best for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I like that because I, essentially what you're saying is that phrase of like, you know, joy, joy and happiness is a choice isn't like a one size fit all like joy isn't a one size fit all for all. Right. And so, you know, and that's interesting. Right. Because and I, I think that that's important. And what would be interesting is to see more content around. Right. Like finding happy when your body doesn't want to be happy. Right. Because your right. body, if your body and your mind doesn't want to be happy, but like your consciousness wants to be happy then it's a battle it's an internal battle so how do you win that right because it's it's not as simple as flipping a switch or choosing you know and, and so that's interesting so yeah more content for you to put out lady more good stuff yeah do you think for you <laughs> yeah i feel like for you you kind of do go through that you like wake up and you're like okay today's gonna be a good day because you are like very affirmation like oriented right so it is i feel like probably yeah. is it you, like that way that it's like today I am choosing to be happy and to find joy and like that's what gets you through is that is that yeah so works? for me exactly so for me I I will affirm what I want for the day like yes right. like I'm blessed I'm sassy I'm a bad bitch right. today and then yeah. like one o'clock will happen and then my body's like oh chick peace <laughs> and I'm like no 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 <laughs> <laughs> period of like ugh and and so that's where i have to use things like exercise or you know meditation or napping or things like that uh to try to rejuvenate and again my business makes me very happy right being a coach brings me immense joy being able to work with brands like style for it bring me immense joy so my work is like it's a kick me up kind of like woohoo right like your art right like so so if i'm like oh it's one o'clock but but i have things to do i'll try to push through as much as i can but i think what 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 it is with happiness is i i just try to choose it and and so sometimes my body's like no but i'm i'm fighting and i'm constantly trying to choose it but i i hear you when you're saying you know, that might not work for everyone. And that's important. And that's important for it to be set for you to say that because some people might feel like they might get upset, right? Like they want to have a good day and then they're not having a good day and then they're mad at themselves. And that's, that's not going to help either. Like, it's just, no. <laughs> Definitely. And that was the thing was that I felt like it was like my fault because like it wasn't working because like I tried really hard mm. to do that try to say okay i'm you know today's gonna be a good day i'm gonna be happy i'm gonna be happy i'm gonna be happy and it wasn't yeah. working then i ended up it kind of counteract for me unfortunately and i ended up feeling worse um because i felt like it was like even more was wrong with me that i couldn't do this that seemed to work for other people right but to, to you have to cater yeah. it to yourself you know like that's incredible that, like that that's how you that's how you 
do it and that's how you thrive and again mm -hmm. like for me like it's yeah. it's slightly different you know what i mean and and for everyone it's going to be mm -hmm. a little bit different you have to you know cater your life to you you know it's not someone else's life it's yours and it's your mental health exactly. not someone else's it's yeah. your happiness not anybody else's right so you have to take Absolutely. care of that and cater that to you and no one else but also learn Absolutely. from other people, right? Take bits and pieces, you know, okay, this mm -hmm. bit works for me, this bit doesn't, I heard about this, I'm going to try this. And that's how we yeah. can help each other, you know, is to share our experiences and maybe it will help someone, you know, maybe no one's ever really Absolutely. tried that before and that would work for them. Oh my gosh, you know, um, but then, you know, yeah. someone else listening and to know that they tried it and maybe it didn't work to know that there's other options, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to bad habits, how have, have there been certain bad habits that you've indulged in that have like, just like taken away from you trying to move forward on something? So, and if not, you know, uh, but uh, for just for example, I, I list bad habits as like worrying or like self-doubt or self-hatred or wallowing or like lack of organization. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I definitely have bad habits. Like, <laughs> um, I feel like for me, um, it's when I like shut myself off to other people. I think that's like a really bad habit. Mm. Like when I get down, sometimes I like shut down, and when I should be like, you know, use it to be more taking advantage of my okay. support system, right, and saying, hey just so you know, yeah. I'm having a bad day instead of completely like not communicating. I think that that's something that I do. Um, I have a, a bad habit of maybe like not even texting, you know, ha like texting is like really difficult for me. Um, just like in general. So like when friends try and reach out or want to make plans, I can't even like check my phone, which is inconvenient because I'm a social mm. media influencer. <laughs> so, you know, like I have to kind of, <laughs> I do have to like be on Instagram and be on Facebook, <laughs> and, like do that job. But then like, once I do that job, I like shut yeah. it off. And then, you know, I miss out on, mm. on opportunities and other things and life and support that I okay. could have used. Right. I think that's a bad habit. I think that that's something that I need to work on is, you know, checking my text messages mm -hmm. when um, I don't want to. Because honestly, it, it takes yeah. energy for me. And I don't like to, when I'm going through a hard time, I don't like to waste any, any extra energy. Because that little energy that I have mm. to get through, right? Yeah. But, um, but that is energy that, is good energy that should be used for good and though it's difficult i need to work on that for sure absolutely absolutely yeah i mean for me i would say i'm i'm, I'm grateful for my militant father who was like no identify the problems and came that moment right like just like crazy <laughs> jamaican person oh god please stop don't beat me <laughs> But for me, I have found, like, yeah, like, worrying is a bad, like, oh, I'm a worry work. Like, that crap will literally take years off your life. So I've identified that I'm not going to worry. I used to worry a lot in my life. Nope, not doing that. Self-doubt, right? Oh, I don't know. Bullshit, right? You can just accept it and move forward. Uh, <laughs> Self-hatred, that was a big one. Uh, not loving yourself or not, not, whether it's how you look or how you act. You're, there's only one you, right? Like you got to love the hell out of you because you owe it to yourself. <laughs> and, and what's interesting is the more you love on yourself, the more that you appreciate and you're grateful for you, the universe sends more positive things that celebrate you. So like, it's essentially just like, it's like cashing money in the bank. Like the more you do it, the more your account keeps getting bigger and bigger. So like, cash in guys on self-love like crazy like all day every day uh shaming yourself right oh i didn't do this well enough bullshit if you want to work on something work on it right but shame doesn't do anything uh wallowing in things for me again it's it's not it's the same as worrying right just figure out what the changes move on procrastination i think is something everyone struggles with 
again, I think the biggest issue with that bad habit is like, why are you procrastinating? Are you scared? Do you not really want to do it? Right? Like there's, a, it's not procrastination. It's always something else. So like, rev like peeling back the onion and, and really getting down to it. Uh, so that's what I say for that. And with that, we have been talking for years and years, baby. I don't want to take up your time. You're a busy woman. So. No, oh my God. I can't believe it's been an hour already. Wow. See, that's the thing is I could talk about this stuff all day, every day. I, I all know. day, every day. Oh, that's awesome. This is cathartic that's for awesome. me. Well, so I like, guess, do you have any, uh, yeah. To be able to talk about this stuff. No, go ahead. Say what you say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. No, thank you. I feel like this was a really helpful conversation and you gave me insight even on like certain phrasing that people say, right? Like it, it could be a trigger for some people, right? So I appreciate, no, I've, I've learned a lot and I, and I appreciate, and again, it's, it's always, you're just a blessing, a blessing and a glory to always spend time with. So thank you. And guys, uh, before we go get to the end of it, do you have any other like last words of wisdom, things that you didn't say that maybe you wanted to say on the subject? You know, I think just what it boils down to is it's okay to not be okay. Um, you're not alone and uh, ask for help. Yeah and you'll get through it. <laughs> I think those are just, that's just yes. the base because it's true. Those are the fundamentals, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> You're not alone. And despite how it may seem, you will get through it. And there are things that you can do to get through it. And if it's watching things like this Absolutely. or, you know, doing things like that for yourself, like a hundred percent do it. And, uh, yep. you know, uh, we're a team where, you know, the universe is, you know, we're all connected and, uh, you know, yeah, you're gonna know that you can push through. I've pushed through, you've pushed through, you know, mm -hmm. people have suffered and, and are in pain yep. and, um, it doesn't have to be the end, you know, there is tomorrow. And, uh, even if one day is hard, another day will be easier and a day after that will be a little bit more. So just know that and, Absolutely. you know, be okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you will be okay, everyone. And, uh, I guess to add to that, I would say when you're on this journey that we call life, <laughs> there are ups and downs, right? But, you know, trying to understand how to care for yourself no matter whether you're on a high or whether you're on a low is really going to help you. I have found taking moments to just feed self, right? Feed your mind, feed your body, feed your soul. It only helps you, right? And and also like what you said, just getting really real with yourself. Guys, you <laughs> I'm personally I'm anti-lying, but if you if you are a liar, fine. <laughs> live your life <laughs> no judgment but who you shouldn't lie to is yourself god damn it like you've got to get real with you <laughs> and you've got to so like when you said like if you're not okay you are not okay right and you, if, if that's where you're at then make appropriate actions and take appropriate actions whether your family supports you or not whether the world understands it or not like but being real with yourself i think is really key right there have been times that i i remember you know i've been working struggling on something and pushing down emotions and just saying you're fine when you're not really fine it's not you it, you're it's going to bubble up and you're then just going to have like something much bigger <laughs> than if you had just dealt with it in the beginning, right? Instead of letting it cre cre kind of manifest into this bigger issue. So that's one thing I would say. And again, solutions, guys, like there's always a solution. It's not, I'm just, I just have to live and suffer. That's bullshit. Like, no, there, there's, you know, there is a solution to the, to, to whatever's going on. So please love yourself enough to, to get it. Please love yourself enough to care for yourself and, and share this, share this out with anyone that you feel would benefit from uh, this conversation. And with that faith, how can people get in touch with you? Where do they go to connect with you? How can they champion you and any announcements, all of that good stuff? Yeah. So uh, for those who don't know, my main platform is Instagram um, at faith underscore plus fashion, all spelled out. Um, I have my Facebook page here, but you can just go to my website, faithcasta.com, and you can like connect to everything there. I have my blog, I have my art. Um, again, I'd say the easiest way is just faithcasta.com. Okay, perfect. And any announcements, any things on the art front, on the modeling front? 
Uh, not particularly at this very moment. Um, I'll be doing some like art events this okay. summer um, in the Philadelphia area. Um, but other than that, everything is just everything's regular right now. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, same for me, I would say. Uh, no real, and I mean, I'm doing, I'm speaking at a, a, an event called No Barrier Summit, which you would love. They talk about mental health and physical health and like fashion, like uh, so many different things. It's all about kind of limitless living and trying to get past it. And I've never been to Lake Tahoe in California, so I'm super excited. That's taking place in June. So go to dressingroom.number8.com and you'll get that. And then what else? I think I'm, I'm working on booking some other events and so you know always hustling always working yeah. so <laughs> go, to, go to dressing room the number eight.com and you can find us there and then with that uh you still have to upload some stuff onto your style for it right yes yes i actually have a lot of stuff i've been meaning to do it i definitely have now i finally have a little bit of time after there was some like family things a lot of weddings and stuff so now <laughs> yeah. i am ready to like upload some things so i'll be posting that soon um uh, and shop away people you know and uh if you haven't already you can create your own shop if you want and uh you know your used plus size clothing and uh you know it's awesome it's totally awesome Absolutely. Yes, guys, if you haven't already joined the Style For It community, go to styleforit.com. You'll see her shop. You'll see my shop. Uh, there's some really cool items. I mean, there's like, uh, I think there's a bag that it's like two and nearly $200 of savings, right? Because that that's the beauty of consignment. It's brand spanking new and it's not the retail price and you're going to save a bunch of money. So there's accessories, there's clothes. I think there's even a wedding dress up on there. So wow. shop, 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 ladies. Uh, yeah, save, save some money and enjoy your fashion and also do it in an eco-friendly way, right? Instead of having all these clothes end up in landfills, you know, why don't we reshare, recycle, reuse and, uh, and be eco-friendly up to our earth because uh, she matters. Mother Earth is here and she's like, what's up, guys? Like, what's popping? <laughs> Y'all acting real crazy and I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so like yeah now <laughs> let's save oh mother earth God. she needs some love we have to love on mother earth just a little bit just a little bit <laughs> and, uh, and then just thank you everyone gonna take her the earth. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes because we need somewhere to stand on man like yeah. everyone just acts like earth is just always gonna be here it won't if we don't take care of it. Like, <laughs> you got to take care of your planet, man. <laughs> so please, 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 please remember eco-friendly choices matter. <laughs> and uh, yes, love on yourself. Love on Mother Earth makes the world a better place. And thank you for tuning in. And make sure faithcasa.com, dressingroommate.com, styleforit.com, guys. Hit us all up. And uh, with that, enjoy the rest of your day, beautiful one, okay? Oh, thank you so much. It's just such a great conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Always Amazing. As always. Awesome. All righty. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.